42,000 years ago, the sky over Europe was on fire. Auroras danced above frozen valleys. Nights glowed green, red, and violet, a light show no Neanderthal had ever seen. But beauty was just the disguise of death. Earth's magnetic field, our planet's shield against cosmic radiation, was failing. The air itself was turning toxic, the sun burning through an ozone layer that no longer held. In this chaos, one entire human species, the Neanderthals, disappeared. And for reasons written in the stars and in our DNA, we survived. What really killed the Neanderthals, us or the sky itself? 42,000 years ago, the world was colder, quieter, and home to more than one kind of human. Neanderthals ruled the vast plains of Ice Age Europe. Stocky, strong, and intelligent, they had survived brutal winters, hunted mammoths, and built lives in the frozen valleys long before modern humans arrived. But one night, Something impossible happened. The sky came alive. Brilliant curtains of green and crimson light rippled above their camps. The auroras, once confined to the poles, now danced over every continent. In Africa, they shimmered above jungles. In Australia, they glowed across deserts. And in Europe, Neanderthals looked up at the flickering heavens, not knowing they were witnessing the first signs of a catastrophe. This wasn't just a strange light show. It was a cosmic warning. Deep. Beneath their feet, 3,000 kilometers down in Earth's molten heart, the magnetic field was failing. Normally, that field, a vast invisible shield, deflects deadly solar winds and cosmic rays, keeping Earth's atmosphere intact. But during what scientists now call the Adams event, the magnetic poles began to wander and weaken until the Kitum field collapsed to less than 10% of its normal strength. For nearly 1,500 years, Earth's natural defense went offline. Radiation flooded the skies. The ozone layer thinned. The sun, once a source of warmth, became a weapon. And the Neanderthals, who lived exposed under open skies, suddenly found their greatest enemy wasn't another species. It was the planet itself. As the magnetic field collapsed, the Earth was left naked before the sun. Radiation that was once deflected now tore through the atmosphere. The skies filled with strange colors. Not the gentle auroras of today, but wild. Electric storms stretching from horizon to horizon, the air itself began to change. Ozone, the invisible barrier that protects life from ultraviolet rays, started to vanish. With each passing year, the sunlight grew harsher. Forests wilted. Animal migrations faltered. Even Neanderthal skin toughened by generations under northern skies, began to blister and burn. But radiation did more than scorch flesh. It rewrote life. The higher energy particles pierced living cells, twisting DNA, weakening immune systems, and raising infant mortality. Pregnancies failed more often. Illness spread, and deep in the caves of Europe, Neanderthals huddled closer to firelight, seeking shelter from an invisible killer they couldn't name. They adapted, as they always had, they hunted at dusk. They foraged in forests instead of open plains. They smeared ash and ochre on their skin, perhaps as ritual, perhaps as primitive sunscreen. But even their resilience had limits. The climate grew erratic. Thunderstorms gave way to deep freezes. Fires ravaged dry grasslands. Then ice returned to bury the ash. This cosmic storm wasn't a single moment. It was an age-long siege. And while Neanderthals endured, Something else stirred far to the south, a small scattered population of Homo sapiens, whose creativity and adaptability were about to tip the balance. The Adams event wasn't just a natural disaster, it was the stage-setting moment for a brutal evolutionary duel. One species trying to survive the sky's wrath, the other learning to outsmart it. For tens of thousands of years, Neanderthals had owned Europe. They knew every valley, every herd, every hidden cave. But as the Adams event deepened, their world began to unravel. Herd animals, reindeer, bison, mammoth, migrated erratically, confused by shifting seasons and magnetic chaos. The plants they relied on withered under new extremes. One year scorched, the next frozen solid. And through it all, the radiation kept falling. Invisible but deadly, sapping the health of entire clans. Meanwhile, far to the south, our ancestors, Homo sapiens, were moving northward. They had watched the same skies, felt the same fear, but unlike Neanderthals, 
they were restless innovators. When the world changed, they adapted fast. They painted caves not just as art, but as maps of memory. They crafted new shelters, new weapons, new ways to preserve food. Where Neanderthals clung to survival, Sapiens experimented. And when the Earth's magnetic field finally began to recover, around 41,000 years ago, the two species met in a Europe transformed by cosmic fire and ice. It wasn't an invasion. Not at first, there were encounters, exchanges, even children. But resources were scarce. The forests were thinning, the megafauna retreating, and competition turned deadly. The weakened Neanderthal populations, already decimated by radiation and famine, were now forced to fight a species whose strength wasn't muscle. It was imagination. The Adams event had been a cosmic accident, a burst of chaos from the heavens. But its consequences were deeply human. It shattered ecosystems, reshaped minds, and may have written the final chapter of an entire species. By the time the skies cleared and the auroras faded back toward the poles, the Neanderthals were gone, and only one kind of human looked up at the stars and the survivors. After the sky quieted and the storms faded, the damage was done. The world that Neanderthals had once mastered was gone. Broken forests, empty plains, unpredictable winters, Radiation had weakened their bodies. Famine and cold had thinned their tribes. Now they were ghosts scattered across the collapsing Ice Age frontier. In the caves of southern France, Spain and Croatia, archaeologists have found traces of their final years. Charcoal from dying campfires, tools made from worn-down flint resharpened again and again, signs of scarcity. The bones of hunted animals became smaller, less frequent. They were running out of food, out of strength, and out of time. The Neanderthals had always been survivors. They'd faced glacial winters before, fought giant predators, even thrived in the harshest landscapes on Earth. But this time was different. The Adams event had not only destroyed their environment, it had fractured their world. Tribes that once roamed freely became trapped in shrinking pockets of habitable land. To the east, the steppes froze solid. To the west, violent storms cut off the coasts, and in between, a new threat crept closer. Modern humans. Our ancestors had arrived with unfamiliar tools, bone needles for sewing furs, fishing hooks for rivers, and delicate blades that could cut with surgical precision. They traveled in larger groups, shared knowledge, and communicated with a complexity that allowed them to coordinate hunts and migrations. Neanderthals watched these strange newcomers from the shadows of their caves, uncertain if they were enemies or kin. They were strong, stronger than us. But even strength cannot fight extinction forever. As the ice crept down from the north, their world shrank to a few sacred refuges, the last strongholds of a dying species. Imagine it, two kinds of humans standing face to face. Somewhere in Ice Age Europe, one tall, slender, with clever eyes and tools of bone and ivory. The other, de broad, powerful, scarred by generations of struggle, they stared at each other across the firelight, not knowing that this meeting would decide the future of a humankind archaeological. Sites across Europe and the Near East tell us this. Wasn't just myth, it truly happened. Neanderthals and Homo sapiens coexisted for thousands of years. Sometimes they fought, sometimes they shared, and sometimes they loved. We know this because their DNA still lives inside us. Every person alive today with Non-African ancestry carries traces of Neanderthal blood. Up to 2% of our genome, that means their story didn't end with extinction. It merged with ours. But coexistence didn't mean equality. The Neanderthals were outnumbered, outplanned and in time outlived. They hunted with heavy thrusting spears, deadly in close range but slow to reload. Our ancestors crafted lighter throwing weapons, could strike from a distance and coordinate attacks using language more complex than anything Neanderthals likely had. They mastered fire in new ways, cooking food for energy efficiency. They built nets and traps instead of chasing prey across the tundra. They shared myths, memories, and survival tricks, passing them down so knowledge could outlast the individual. For Neanderthals, survival was physical. For sapiens, it was cultural. And culture, in an unstable world, was the ultimate weapon. So while a few Neanderthals found fleeting peace, intermarrying, blending their bloodlines, 
most faded away, clan by clan, valley by valley. Their last traces vanished not in war but in silence. The ice advanced, the forests thinned, and the world quietly turned its page. By the time the rest of Europe had frozen over, only a handful of Neanderthal clans remained. They had retreated to the farthest edges of the continent, to the cliffs of Gibraltar, to the coasts of southern Iberia, and perhaps to hidden mountain valleys no one would ever find again. Here the winds were warmer, the seas rich with fish, the caves deep and protective. For thousands of years after their cousins vanished from the north, these last Neanderthals held on. They hunted seals and birds along the rocky shorelines. They used shells for tools and painted with red ochre. In the darkness of their caves they still lit fires, small flickering lights against an overwhelming night. But the world was changing around them, the ice was retreating, the forests shifting, and new waves of Homo sapiens arrived, explorers, traders, families carrying stories of faraway lands. To them, these Neanderthals must have seemed like echoes of an older time, powerful, strange, and few. Perhaps they traded, perhaps they fought. We will never know. What we do know is that by around 39,000 years ago, the last Neanderthal campfire burned out. Not in battle, not in apocalypse, just slowly, through hunger, isolation, and time. When that final ember faded, so too did an entire way of being human. One that had endured the ice age, the magnetic storm, and every cruelty of nature. And yet they never truly disappeared. Their blood still runs in ours. Their genes shape our immune systems, our skin, even our moods. Every heartbeat we carry is proof that they didn't vanish. They became part of us. The last Neanderthals didn't die out. They came home. When the last Neanderthal fire went cold, the earth entered a strange calm. The storms had passed, the skies had cleared, and the magnetic field, when once shattered, slowly regained its strength. But the silence that followed was not peace. It was aftermath. The world was emptier now. The great beasts still roamed, mammoths, woolly rhinos, cave bears. But something fundamental had changed. Only one kind of human walked the land. For the first time in millions of years, we were alone. The extinction of the Neanderthals didn't just erase a rival. It reshaped who we became. It left Homo sapiens as the sole inheritors of memory fear and imagination, and in the echo of that cosmic storm, our ancestors began to dream bigger. It's no coincidence that right after the Neanderthals vanished, the world exploded with creativity. Cave walls came alive with colors, animals painted in motion, handprints left as symbols of existence, jewelry, carvings, rituals, the first whispers of spirituality. It was as if humanity, suddenly aware of its loneliness, turned inward to find meaning. We started building not just tools, but stories. Stories to explain the sky, the fire, the loss. The Adams event had tested life to its breaking point. Those who survived carried a new kind of intelligence, not just in their brains, but in their hearts, a deeper sense of fragility, a deeper hunger to endure. The storm that had nearly destroyed humanity had in a way defined it. From the ashes of extinction, something extraordinary was born, the modern human mind. Once the sky cleared and the world began to heal, the surviving humans emerged, cautious, sunburned, but alive. They had learned hard lessons written not in words, but in scars. The Adams event had reshaped the climate. Ice advanced, deserts expanded, forests shifted. But the people who endured had something no species before them possessed, the ability to adapt through culture. They began to move, out of Africa into the Middle East, across frozen tundras and into the heart of Europe, lands once ruled by Neanderthals. Every migration carried echoes of that cosmic disaster. The instinct to find shelter, to stay together, to tell stories around firelight. And those stories mattered. They weren't just myths, they were survival strategies. Children learned from tales of the burning sky, of beasts that vanished, of shelters that saved lives. Mythology became memory encoded in narrative form. Archaeologists can see the fingerprints of that transformation everywhere. Stone blades became thinner, more precise. Hunting tools diversified. Clothing appeared, stitched with bone needles. 
art bloomed like a second dawn, not just for beauty but for identity. In the caves of France, Spain and Indonesia, paintings of animals, lions, mammoths, bison, cover the walls, hands are stenciled in red ochre, reaching across time. Those pigments weren't chosen at random. The red ochre humans smeared on their skin as sunscreen during the Adams event now became a sacred color, a reminder of survival itself. The Neanderthals were gone, but they weren't forgotten. Some scientists believe they live on, not in form, but in us. Genetic studies show that every non-African human today carries fragments of Neanderthal DNA, silent traces of a shared history that refuses to die. So, in a strange twist, their extinction wasn't total. Their story became entwined with ours. Their strength, their endurance, their memory written into our genes. The Adams event didn't just end one species. It fused two into something new. A human capable of surviving not just nature's wrath, but time itself. The Earth's magnetic field, our invisible armor, recovered from the Adams event. The poles drifted back into place. The auroras retreated to the north and the ozone healed. But the memory of what happened was written into everything that survived. It lives in our DNA, in ancient myths about angry skies and gods who punish the earth. It lives in the fear of darkness, in our obsession with light and fire. It lives in the way we look up at the night sky and wonder if it could all happen again, because it might. Scientists have discovered that Earth's magnetic field is weakening again. Over the past two centuries, it's lost nearly 10% of its strength, and there's a region, the South Atlantic Anomaly, where that field has grown dangerously thin. Satellites passing through it glitch and fail. Spacecraft systems short circuit. Some geophysicists warn it could be the first tremor before another magnetic excursion, another Adams event. If that happens today, the consequences wouldn't just be biological, they'd be technological. Our satellites, GPS systems, and electrical grids all depend on protection from solar radiation. Without the magnetosphere, a single solar storm could cripple global communication, fry power networks, and shut down navigation. For the first time since the Neanderthals disappeared, humanity would once again face the same cosmic vulnerability. Only now, our survival depends not on caves but on circuits. The question is, would we adapt again? Would our creativity, our cooperation, our storytelling, the same instincts that saved our ancestors, save us now? Because the Adams event wasn't just a natural disaster, it was a mirror, showing us what happens when the world changes faster than we can control. It ended one species. It forced another to evolve. And in that crucible of extinction and survival, humanity was born. We carry their story every time we strike a match, paint a symbol, or tell a story by firelight. We are the children of the storm, proof that even when the sky falls, the spark of life can rise again. The Neanderthals didn't vanish because they were weak. They vanished because the world itself turned against them. The sky burned, the air changed, and the sun became a silent predator. Yet from that darkness to us, from that age of chaos, something new emerged. Us, we carry their fire, their strength, their memories written in our genes. Every time we build, create, or imagine, we echo those who came before. The ones who looked up at the same sky and refused to surrender. The Adams event was more than a catastrophe. It was a rebirth, a cosmic trial that forced humanity to evolve. Not just physically, but spiritually. It turned survival into creativity and fear into meaning. So the next time you see an aurora dancing across the sky, remember, it's not just beauty. It's a reminder of how close we once came to disappearing and how far we've come since. Because every human story begins the same way, with something trying to destroy us, and us finding a way to survive.